thought I was sort of past being shocked. I will admit I found this legitimately shocking. Quote, Donald Trump and his allies are drafting plans to potentially invoke the Insurrection Act on his first day in office to allow him to, to deploy the military against civil demonstrations. Quote, dubbed Project 2025, the group is developing a plan to include draft executive orders that would deploy the U.S. military domestically under the Insurrection Act. The proposal is identified in internal discussions as an immediate priority. The guy reportedly leading the work on this Insurrection Act plan under Project 2025 is Jeffrey Clark, a Trump Justice Department official who proposed having DOJ endorse fake fraud claims to effectively tell the states that they should ignore election results and keep Trump in power. According to Trump's federal indictment, he allegedly favored using the Insurrection Act back then to use the U.S. military to keep Trump in power. Now, I should note that a spokesperson for the Heritage Foundation, which is organizing this Project 2025, is denying the existence of this Insurrection Act plan. But it is part of one of this, this it's part of one of this, this fairly shocking set of new reporting uh, from Isaac Arnsdorf, Josh Dawsey, and Devlin Barrett, um, just out at the Washington Post. Joining us now is Washington Post national security reporter Devlin Barrett. Devlin, it's nice to see you. Thanks very much for being here tonight. Thanks for having me. So I have to ask you, in light of the Heritage Foundation denying the Insurrection Act part of this reporting, I just have to ask you if you if you stand by your reporting and what you make of that denial. Well, absolutely. I mean, look, here's here's the, the weird dynamic that the Insurrection Act has played, not just this year, but for a number of years now, which is that starting around mid-2020, there were a lot of people who tried to convince Trump to invoke the Insurrection Act to put down protests against police, protests against his administration, uh, any number of things that they didn't like going on in the public square. So now what you have is a number of folks sort of mapping out what they would like a second Trump administration to look like. And one of the things they would like to see is the use of the Insurrection Act to put down any protests. That is a let's face it, fairly theoretical conversation at this point. There is no second Trump administration yet. There is no, you know, set of public protests to put down. But I think it says a lot about the way uh, conservatives are talking about what a second Trump administration would look like, that one of the things that is right on the table right away is the Insurrection Act. Yeah, the timing and it being there right away is the part of it that really has stuck with me. I mean, if there aren't big civil demonstrations to put down, right, which is the theoretical justification for something like the Insurrection Act, is it your understanding that they're preparing these executive orders, they're preparing these potential actions, essentially to invoke the Insurrection Act as soon as he's president, so it's there as a proverbial loaded gun for him to use whenever he feels like it, rather than expecting it to have to be reactive to something um, that they're anticipating actually happening in the country. Sure, but I think there's one word of caution here to, to understand, which is that this is what some folks around Trump and some folks who hope to be part of the second Trump administration would like to see happen. That doesn't necessarily mean that Trump has adopted these things, that Trump mm. already wants to do these things. I think one of the big conversations going, or going on in conservative circles right now as we speak, and this is a big part of what we were trying to report on and explain is that there's a lot of conservatives, including conservative lawyers, who are trying to argue out, like, what should their role, if any, be in a second Trump administration? Because increasingly, it looks like he will be the nominee. So there's a lot of Republicans who have to make choices right now. And this is part of the discussion of those choices. Yeah. The legal profession has some choices to make, too. Um, in terms of its own professional responsibilities. Uh, Washington Post national security reporter Devlin Barrett, this is chilling and fascinating reporting. Thanks for helping us understand it. Thanks for having me.